In the previous video, we talked about the three types of ecological pyramids, the number pyramid, the energy pyramid and the biomass pyramid. So far, whatever we had seen in that video were types of upright pyramids where the base was broad and as we went up each trophic level, the bar became shorter and the top was the narrowest. We were of course starting off with producers at the bottom and we were going up each trophic level. In this video, we are going to talk about inverted pyramids which are another type of ecological pyramids that have a narrow base and as we go up the trophic levels, the top is going to become much wider. Now, how do you get this inverted pyramids as compared to this normal type of upright pyramids? Inverted pyramids can be seen in number pyramids and biomass pyramids. We saw in the previous video why it cannot be so for energy pyramids. How can an inverted number pyramid form? Let's first take a look at that. So here we have a tree in a forest. Now this tree is a single individual of course in the forest, but it's going to support a variety of primary consumers and even secondary consumers like insects, worms, small birds, etc. So the number of these primary and secondary consumers is definitely going to be more than one. So if you were to plot this in the form of ecological pyramids, again starting with the producers at the bottom or the base, you will get a pyramid that looks like this. The producers are lower in number, in this case it's just one individual, but there are several primary consumers and secondary consumers dependent on this producer which makes their number higher than this producer. So the next trophic level as we go up becomes a wider rectangle making this an inverted number pyramid. The base is narrow. But the top as we go up, that's going to become much wider. Now this is of course true for a lot of other niche ecosystems. Let's say there is a tree log fallen on the floor of the forest. Now that tree log is going to be consumed by insects like ants and beetles and those insects will be consumed by smaller birds. So that also makes an inverted pyramid. Now what about inverted biomass pyramids? Inverted biomass pyramids are often seen in marine ecosystems where the phytoplankton are the producers, the primary producers. They are consumed by zooplankton which makes them the primary consumers. Zooplankton is consumed by small fishes making them secondary consumers and these small fishes are consumed by big fishes which makes them the tertiary consumers. If you were to calculate the biomass of these individuals, the phytoplankton would have the least amount of biomass which makes sense because they are like microscopic organisms, right? And the big fishes like sharks and other big fishes, they would have the highest amount of biomass, which means that the biomass is actually going to increase as we go up each trophic level. And if you were to plot this in the form of an ecological pyramid, starting again with producers at the base, you're going to get an inverted biomass pyramid that looks something like this. The producers occupy the bottommost level but they have the least amount of biomass. The biomass is increasing as you go up each trophic level in the marine ecosystem with the big fishes having the highest amount of biomass in this ecosystem. So this is a type of an inverted biomass pyramid. Now we've talked for quite some time about the types of ecological pyramids but there are a lot of shortcomings of these ecological pyramids. One is that like I said in the previous video, it doesn't take into consideration organisms that occupy two or more trophic levels. Like if it's a sparrow, it can either be a primary consumer while it is eating leaves or it can be a secondary consumer while it is eating the other insects, right? So those ecological pyramids don't take into consideration such animals or individuals. 
Also, it doesn't take into consideration the existence of saprophytes in any of the ecological pyramids. Saprophytes are fungi, right? They play a very important role in the ecosystem, especially in the recycling of nutrients. None of the ecological pyramids actually take into consideration the saprophytes, which in my opinion is a huge shortcoming because saprophytes are such a very important part of our ecosystem. Another thing is that these pyramids are based on food chains and not food webs. There rarely exist simple food chains in the ecosystem. It is always food webs because it's a very complex interaction that occurs between different trophic levels. But these ecological pyramids are based on simple food chains and not food webs, which is another shortcoming of such pyramids. With this, we're finally done talking about the different types of ecological pyramids.